Welcome to the SNN Network Canada virtual event. I'd like to introduce our next presenter, Chase Edgelow, CEO of Evergen Infrastructure Corp. Chase, the floor is yours. Great. Hi, everybody, and, and thanks for having me today at, at the conference. Uh, so we're, we're here to talk about Evergen Infrastructure Corp, which is a, a company that my partners and I founded uh, about two years ago. Uh, we recently went public on the TSXV uh, under the ticker EVGN. I'll just, I'll just move ahead on the slides here. So, so what you're seeing on slide two is really a, a snapshot of what we do at Evergen. What we are is we're a acquirer, developer, owner, and operator of renewal, renewable natural gas infrastructure projects. So this, these are projects that deliver a green gas into the gas grid, much in the same way that the independent power producers, you know, the Northlands, Interjex, and Forelexes of the world, deliver renewable content into the electrical grid and, and, and have utilities as their partners, we have long-term offtake contracts with the gas utilities. And what we do is we focus on building reliable infrastructure to supply gas, uh, sustainable green gas, which comes from organic waste. And we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about uh, the projects that we have uh, currently, the EBITDA uh, that we have out of our three existing assets, and the growth that we have uh, with the, the expansion that we're doing in our initial two projects and then our pipeline beyond that. So if we, if we think about the business, really there's three things that, that we are focused on. And, and first and foremost, it's having stable, long-term contracted cash flow. And we get that through offtake agreements with the gas utilities. Uh, when we look at uh, the sustainable investing world, you know, what what we're seeing is an incredible demand from those utilities for green fuels to put into their existing infrastructure. And, and what that looks like is there's a number of different utilities that all have their own targets, uh, but those targets range from anywhere from 5 to 15% of their content uh, to, to be renewable by 2030. And, and we're starting from a very low base of, of less than 1% today. By our estimate, what this means is in Canada, there's a build out of uh, more than a couple billion dollars of infrastructure required to achieve those targets. And what we've done is we've positioned Evergen to be a leader in that infrastructure build out. And thirdly, it, it's what that pipeline looks like. So when we look at the landscape across Canada, we see a number of projects in BC, Ontario, Quebec, uh, and Alberta that uh, will be built in the next five, 10 years and we're focused on, on what we can deliver here in the next 12 to 24 months. On slide four, this, this is a snapshot of, of where Evergen is today. We've, we've come out of the gate, we've acquired three projects in British Columbia. These are uh, green infrastructure assets that we've got expansion plans uh, with uh, that are all located in and around the Metro Vancouver region. When we I get to the next slide here, uh, just in the interest of time. When we acquired Net Zero Waste Abbotsford and Sea to Sky Soils, what we were doing was acquiring brownfield assets, existing cash flowing assets that uh, were the perfect candidates for renewable natural gas infrastructure expansion. So in the case of Net Zero Waste Abbotsford, what we have is a facility that's currently processing municipal green bin waste. So if you've got a green bin program where you live, you'd be familiar with the, the concept of, of separating your organic waste and, and the municipalities picking up that organic waste. And what they do is they typically drop it off at a, a facility like Net Zero Waste Abbotsford where uh, we take all of the organic waste in on the front end and we sell organic compost on the back end and it's a closed loop system. It's a circular economy operation that allows the municipalities to, to not only process their waste efficiently, but uh, to also get back a product that's used in agriculture uh, in terms of soil and in residential development. And, that, and that, that operation has been in place for over eight years. Uh, it's the backbone of, an, of a renewable natural gas build out that we're doing at that project in 2022. And what we're doing there is we're building natural gas capture infrastructure. So 
the facility already has organic waste coming to it. And, and what we're doing is, is building the incremental in infrastructure to capture the gas that's released as organic waste decomposes. And, and this is really one of the key drivers of, of renewable natural gas and the benefits that it has uh, as, a, as a green fuel is that you're capturing methane emissions that if, if the waste had gone to landfill would have been released direct, directly to atmosphere. Uh, methane being 30 times more harmful than CO2, by capturing that methane, we can really take, uh, take emissions down considerably and these, car these projects are actually carbon negative. Moving on to Fraser Valley Biogas, this is the original RNG project uh, that produced into Fortis Species Network and allowed them to start selling green fuel about 10 years ago. It's an agricultural and, and commercial waste digester project. So it's, it's very similar to our expansion project at Net Zero Waste Abbotsford, but it's been producing natural gas, renewable natural gas for, for over 10 years. And we acquired this facility in April with the intention to considerably expand this facility. So if you, if you can see on the slides, just at the back uh, of, of the, the image, there's two green digesters, the same, this is the same facility that's on our, the cover of our presentation. Those digesters I'll talk about here in the coming slides, but those really act as the, the giant stomach that allows the organic waste to decompose quickly and the gas to be extracted uh, and, and, and then taken and, and used in, in the natural gas pipeline network. Those two digesters have a third and a fourth digester behind them that, that were started. So the civil work you can kind of see in the slide was started 10 years ago. The project was never finished. So, so we acquired this with the intention to expand this facility. And with these two facilities, what we have is uh, the backbone of our growth. So we take our EBITDA from around the $3 million level, two and a half, three million million level this year to 12 to $15 million of EBITDA in 2023 on the back of the investment that we're making into these two assets. And we've raised, raised the capital to do that through our IPO, the equity investment through our IPO, and we'll be using a mixture of project finance and, and corporate debt facilities to finance those two projects. So that, that is our growth, and, and that is the, the initial wedge of growth that we have next year. Go to the next slide here. So, in terms of, of our team, I, you know, I, I think just important uh, to us was when we started looking at the space two years ago, there wasn't a publicly listed renewable natural gas company uh, in, in any capacity. And, and since that time, there's been about four or five of them that have, have popped up in the U.S., uh, primarily focused on U.S. projects. What we didn't see was a platform that could uh, infratize or even in our in our world, what, what that means is really bring a sophisticated approach to developing projects in Canada. And, and we have that with our, our team. We've got a, a best in class uh, team that has both infrastructure experience. From my background, I spent about a decade at Macquarie Group, uh, one of the larger infrastructure investors, looking at investing in projects like these across the world uh, in, the, in the renewable space and in the energy space. Our COO, Sean Mezzi, has over 20 years of experience in the RNG industry, and, and he's, he's really been focused on this industry prior to anybody else uh, in, in our country uh, in a major way that, that, uh, that has given him tremendous insight to what works on projects and what doesn't work. He's seen over 60 projects globally, and he's been uh, involved heavily in, in the expansion of the renewable natural gas sector in the U.S., and, and that sector is is currently, uh, from, a, from an estimate that we've put together, over an $8 billion sector, uh, just, if you just look at the, the large publics and private companies that are chasing that space. Misha Zatman is our president. He brings a strong legal and contracts background, but he's also been an entrepreneur and built uh, you know, companies from the ground up in, in a very similar fashion to, to what we're doing at Evergen. So with that and our leadership uh, team, uh, supported by our board, we, we truly believe we've got a, a leg up on uh, some of the other developers in the space. I also think our, our model is unique. We're, we're a pure play renewable natural gas operator. We, we've specifically tried to 
focus uh, our activities so that we've got only the the type of projects that uh, that that we see as as truly low risk infrastructure style projects and what uh what that looks like is, is here on slide six. This is probably my favorite slide to talk to. Uh, it, I think it, it sums up the business in, in a very simple fashion for, for those that aren't familiar with either the infrastructure space or renewable natural gas. You know, this is it. We, we get paid on the front end to take in three types of organic waste, uh, municipal uh, source separated, so green bin waste uh, from behind households, animal, agricultural waste, which is primarily manure, but also um, to a certain extent, animal uh, waste, spent animals, and that, that type of thing that, that's part of the farming community. And then thirdly, commercial food waste, so and other organic sources where you, we've got organic uh, food waste that's collected by waste haulers, and it, it's looking for a home. All, all three types of waste typically get disposed of uh, in various different manners, but but the most common way would be at a landfill, and at that landfill, they uh, would collect a tip fee, is what it's called, uh, which is really the revenue source uh, for landfills, is, is collection, uh, processing of the waste and taking of the waste. What we do is we, we charge that same tip fee, but what we're not doing is we're not putting this organic waste into a landfill where you're gonna have CO2 and methane emissions we're taking that organic waste and we're putting it into those tanks that you saw on the first slide called anaerobic digesters. And, and really what, what that allows us to do is, is capture all of the gas that's produced, uh, which is the biogas you see coming off the top of the tank. And we upgrade that by removing the CO2 and other impurities into 98% methane, uh, green gas that can be directly connected into the pipeline system and used by the existing utilities. And, and that's the other 50% of our revenue, which comes from on these projects, which comes from long-term contracted offtake agreements with the uh, utilities of, of the world. So Fortis BC, as an example, has a program in Canada where they're, they're targeting 15% renewable natural gas in their system by 2030. And when we look at that on a, uh, a size of, They've got, uh, they would need something close to 50 to 100 projects like uh, Net Zero Waste, Abbotsford, and Fraser Valley Biogas. So there's a lot of work to be done, and we've positioned Evergen to, to be successful in capturing, capturing that uh, pipeline of growth. The other tailwind for our business is it's not just on the, the usage of the green gas, it's also on what the municipalities and uh, commercial food manufacturers are looking for on the front end. And this is to divert that waste that we talked about away from landfill. And what you can see here is that in Canada, this is, you know, this is becoming increasingly prevalent where the green bars on the left represent the diversion of organic waste away from landfill. What hasn't happened though, is there hasn't been a build out of infrastructure to take that organic waste and to capture the energy associated with it or capture the emissions associated with that organic waste. So what you're seeing is, is a growing trend of diversion and a, a growing requirement for infrastructure to be built out. So we see that same trend continuing on the right-hand side of the slide with projects in Alberta, Quebec, and Ontario. So as a, as a pure play uh, focused in Canada, there's, this, this was done intentionally. I think you know, for us, what we like about Canada is that the projects are, are very similar to projects that you'd see in the US or Europe. Uh, the difference that we have in Canada is we have these large utilities like Fortis BC and Energir in Quebec that are willing to provide 20 year contracts. And, and these 20 year contracts are tremendous uh, in terms of de-risking the future cash flow associated with any project and, and allow us to, to take an investment uh, into to multiple projects across the country. The other thing that we like in Canada is the, the feedstock profile. The fact that we're seeing increased regulation in the form of landfill bans, uh, which is increasing tip fees and bolstering the economics associated with any given project. So slide nine, this is, we've touched on this in a couple of different ways, but this is just a snapshot of 
the utilities across North America that are specifically targeting renewable natural gas in their pipeline networks. And what this is, is this is really the, the pull uh, in terms of the, the, two the two tailwinds. This is the pull. We have the push from the organics diversion and the pull from the utilities looking for green fuels. You can see there's, there's some uh, significant targets here in place, which is, is going to incentivize the development of these projects. And, and what's really key is, is the price that's being paid for the gas. It's a fixed price. Uh, Fortis BC, as, as an example, has a capacity to pay up to $31 a gigajoule, which, if you look at historical gas prices, uh, is roughly 10 times the, the spot gas price. And, and the reason that they're doing that is they have demand from their own consumers within their network for, for green fuels, and they're able to uh, sell, sell the renewable natural gas at a premium to traditional fuels because of the fact that it's a negative carbon emission product and, and really allows businesses, the Microsofts, Amazons uh, of the world that have net zero targets to reach those net zero targets faster without building unique or novel new, new infrastructure or having to rely on new technology. They can do it with existing technology and using the existing pipeline network. So slide 10, this is, this is our pipeline. We have, we have a pipeline of uh, about 20 projects here. This is inclusive of our two existing facilities uh, where we're expanding at Net Zero Waste and, and Fraser Valley Biogas. If you look at just the first four of those projects beyond those, those initial two projects, you'll see that we get to a total of six projects and a total of a million gigajoules per year of RNG output. Now, if you, if you look at the typical price for RNG and you assume $25 a gigajoule, that's $25 million of annual reoccurring 20-year contracted revenue associated with these projects that's available. And we typically have 50% of our revenue also coming on the front end from the, the tip fees associated with taking in the organic waste uh, in, a, in a similar fashion to what landfills would charge. So that collectively is... $50 million of revenue associated with this, these six projects. And our EBITDA margins are, are around 60%, so $30 million of EBITDA. You can see you know, our target here is that we would deliver these projects, uh, construction through 2022 on our, on our first two projects, and then through 23 and 24 on our, our next four projects. In slide 12, uh, we've... We've been a, obviously a, a young company, but we've set up our business in a way to really model ourselves after some of the larger infrastructure players like we're coming from the, the Macquarie's and Brookfields of the world. Uh, we want to we wanna set up a very resilient, stable, cash-flowing business with, with a ton of downside protection, but try and leave as much of the un, upside uncapped, and, and we'll talk about that. But what we've done is we've raised over $60 million to date, uh, we have acquired three assets that we set out uh, to acquire uh, day one when we, when we put the business together, uh, the three founding partners. We've raised $20 million through our, our IPO, which was, was done in August. That was a raise at uh, $650 a share with, with the half warrant at $1050. And we recently received our regulatory acceptance for our 20-year optic agreement at Net Zero East Abbotsford. And we've, we've been steadily increasing RNG production at Fraser Valley Biogas, which, which is really was key for, for us in terms of execution at the front half of, of 2021. As, as we move forward into 2022, uh, we're looking to deliver on a number of the project objectives. We're, we're starting to order long lead equipment and that's your way established for Fraser Valley Biogas. We're negotiating an extension uh, or renegotiating a, a new long-term optic agreement at Fraser Valley Biogas. To put that into perspective, uh, an optic agreement, a 20-year optic agreement at a single facility for us could be a an 80 to 100 million dollar uh, contract. So that those are material adds to our business, especially considering our our EBITDA margin. We really de-risk our our future expansion and I think underpin value in our in our company for our shareholders. Uh, slide 12, this is, 
you know, this is a, a just a summary of, of the various touch points that we have where we have an ESG slide in our presentation, but I think unlike other companies that have ESG slides, we're, we're truly an ESG focused company. Our, you know, our business model is, is modeled after solving two critical environmental issues, both how we deal with organic waste and providing uh, low carbon fuel into an energy that can, that can be used in, in the existing grid. Uh, from a social standpoint, we're extremely proud of, of some of the work that we've done at Sea to Sky Soils. That facility is located on First Nations land and uh, has over an 80% First Nations workforce, and it's something that we want to replicate in facilities across Canada. And then, I think from a governance standpoint, we're, you know, we're committed to extremely strong governance uh, in terms of modeling ourselves after large, large infrastructure peers. Slide 13, this is just a snapshot of where we stand today. So we've got a, a very clean capital structure. We've got 13.4 million shares outstanding, and uh, that implies a market cap uh, based on recent trading of around $70 million. We've got $20 million of cash uh, in the bank, and that really is going into the equity contribution of the expansion work that we're doing in 2022 at each of our facilities. Uh, management and board, we own 16% of the company. This is uh, the founding five founders of the company, and we're locked up for three years from our initial capital raise, which uh, incidentally was done at $5 a share. Uh, so there, there's, there was no prior round of funding below $5 a share prior to uh, in terms of bringing in external investors. And then from an analyst perspective, we've got four – uh, four analysts that cover us at Desjardins, RBC, Claris, and Echelon. So if, if anybody's looking for additional information, I think those are great sources uh, in terms of uh, analysis that's been done on our company. On slide 15, uh, sorry, 14, uh, we've got just a snapshot from the Desjardins report of the peers. And I, I think I touched on this earlier, but what we're really excited for is there's been a wave of, of RNG development in the U.S. I think that that same wave of development is just getting started here in, in Canada, and we're on the front end of that. If you look at our, our growth, we traded a, a significant discount to the pure play RNG players uh, in, in the U.S., and I think you'll see us uh, catch up in terms of our EBITDA growth uh, very quickly here. So that's, I think that's the final slide, and we'll uh, leave it open for some questions. But really, we've, we've built Evergen, purpose-built to take advantage of a tremendous opportunity and, and really be a solution provider in terms of uh, building out required infrastructure to capture waste, uh, organic waste, and, and really take the, the natural gas that would have gone to atmosphere anyway and, and take it into the pipeline network. Uh, with some very, very strong uh, partners that are providing the 20-year off-take agreements. We've, uh, we've got an opportunity to scale here as well. Even if we're, even if we're uh, successful in nothing else, you'll see a tremendous amount of growth next year just from our first two projects, and, and we're working very hard to, to add additional projects into the mix, and, and we, we see a tremendous amount of opportunity to grow the business across Canada. So I think the, you know, the questions that we see here, uh, I'll move to you now uh, in the Q&A section. And a reminder, I think you can put uh, put those questions through the portal. Uh, so question on where we see the company in two to three years. I think you know, I think we covered this uh, on the pipeline slide. Probably is is the best place to look there. And really, it's that that one million gigajoule per year output level where we would be producing. Around uh, that that fifty million dollar revenue, thirty million dollar EBITDA level. That that's our two to three year growth target for the business, and and it's to add about three additional facilities uh, to what we currently have in British Columbia, and and that could be uh, that could be anywhere across Canada. From our perspective, we see a lot of opportunity uh, in in a variety of, of places, but but certainly in Ontario, Quebec, and Alberta. Uh, the car next question was a question on carbon credits and whether or not we sell the carbon credits uh, from the carbon negative 
uh, facilities? And I think this is a great question. I think the, the difference in the business model versus some of the American uh, peers is that in the U.S., renewable natural gas is something where you're selling it into the local pipeline network and you're claiming the carbon credits, but you don't have long-term contracts. So there's a little more risk or merchant style risk to those projects. What we do is we sell the gas and all of the renewable attributes to a large utility like Fortis. They get uh, the benefit of those carbon credits and hence uh, they can pay a higher price. They, you know, if we look at one of the sources of upside for our business, the U.S. Uh, market right now for for comparable projects you can sell rng on a on a one-year spot basis for anywhere from 50 to 60 dollars a gigajoule Uh, we're selling it on a long-term contracted basis because of the resiliency that that provides Uh, we we see a a lot of value in having a 20-year contract over over playing in a merchant market Uh, but but we're getting a price that is much lower in that 25 to 30 dollars a gigajoule range the next question was a question on how our energy production costs compare to traditional natural gas plants. And I think we've, we've talked about our EBITDA margin. I think the fact that we're, you know, we're going and we're capturing the, the negative uh, impact uh, in, in relation to the decarbonization potential of these projects allows uh, us to be very profitable at uh, at that thirty dollar a gigajoule level. I think if you look at traditional natural gas, you know, obviously you can produce it very cheaply, but there is there's no negative carbon emissions associated with that. So it's the value of the of the renewable attributes that really makes uh, renewable nat- natural gas projects work. Plus uh, the value that you're providing to, on the front end uh, in terms of waste collection and waste disposal. Uh, in in terms of doing that in a way that is uh, mitigating any potential emissions problems for municipalities. So I think that's I think that's all the questions. I'll, I'll leave it there uh, and turn it back over to uh, the host. That concludes today's presentation, and thank you for tuning in.